Hi hey guys, it's Jeff at Slavens Racing, and I just got back from the Colorado Backcountry Discovery Route ride. Uh, that's a ride that goes from uh, the New, Mex New Mexico border to the to the Wyoming border, crossing Colorado. Uh, it's about 730 miles of dual sport riding, um, anywhere from smooth um, dirt roads to really rocky jeep roads. And a lot of beautiful rocky mountain passes uh, down in the southwestern part of the state. So uh, I've had a lot, of, a lot of guys that know that I was going on this ride ask me questions about my gear and setup on the bike and stuff. So I thought I'd pass this on to you guys. Uh, you can see the bikes are still dirty. A friend of mine, Mike, went with me. Uh, mine's a 2500XCFW. His is a 21. 500 EXCF, basically they're all the same bike. Uh, and this is the bike that I used in Baja earlier this year, and I already have a separate video on that, on that, on that setup. And the setup for this ride is almost identical. I just added a couple of pieces. Um, so I'll, I'll start from here and show you what I've done here. So the bags and everything are the same as I had for the Baja ride. You can look at that video and check it out. Um, this ride, I've got a different front tire on here. This is a Bridgestone X31, a fantastic tire for trail riding or for this event. It worked exceptionally well also. Uh, like I said, we did that tire's got 730 miles on it. And you can see it's still in damn good shape. It could go another 500 miles on that type of ride. And on the back, I still have the IRC M5B. This is the same tire used in Baja. I put 650 miles on it on that ride. On this ride, uh, we actually did 780 miles, so it ends up over 1,400 miles on this rear tire and, this, and the moose. And the front moose is the same as I used on the previous tire as well. So this moose, uh, the bib moose, it's inside of here, this tire, and the tire both have gone 1,430 miles. And you can see this tire, it's not dead yet. I'm gonna take it off, uh, just cause I wanna have some fresh rubber on for my next trip, but uh, this tire definitely has some life left to it. So this is the map for the BDR ride. It's made by Butler a Map Company here in Colorado. Uh, those guys do a great job on maps. We sell those at slavensracing.com. Everything on this bike is available at slavensracing.com. So one of the additions for this ride I did was this giant loop fender bag. And I gotta tell you, I was apprehensive about those uh, <clears throat> mounts holding throughout the whole trip and not losing my my pack, but I mean, we put it through some gnarly stuff and that thing was, fender was bouncing around and that pack never, never budged. I'm very impressed with that pack system and it's also waterproof. Uh, I just kept my ring gear in, inside of there. And I also added this, um, <laughs> I forgot what this pack is called now, it's made by Giant Loop. Uh, shoot. Anyhow, they're on our site. Really slick little pack and in there I kept some sunglasses, uh, some reading glasses, a couple of little tools, and also a rag for wiping off my, my shield and other things. And I travel pretty light, guys. I, um, you know, travel with just like one change of clothes for the evening, a pair of jeans and a shirt, uh, some socks for the evening, a uh, pair of tennis shoes. In here, I carry a cable lock and a pair of gloves. Uh, also some long johns and then of course your bathroom kit that kind of stuff and these Mojave bags these I've had these for a long time and they they hold up extremely well and they're waterproof also so for, also for this trip I added um, this quad lock phone mount and it's the rubber mounted one we've got these on our site slavensracing.com I also put this uh, little tether on here and I run this through uh, the phone case because I did lose a phone this summer because I didn't have a tether on it. 
and because I was bushwhacking and I, my branch broke them out actually. And anyhow, uh, so I added that on there and then I also had the USB port down there with the USB cable running up to the phone so that I could leave the screen on all the time. I just changed the settings. You go in there to uh, the phone settings and you can change it to where the screen stays on all the time. And I just used, uh, well, the first couple days I used the Cotrex app, which is an app just for Colorado. It's free, uh, but it's a little bit harder. It works exceptionally well. But for my old eyes, it was a little bit harder to see than the Rever app, R-E-V-R. Uh, that app is not free if you want the pro version of it. And so I used that Rever app the entire time, and it just has a blue line that you follow. So, of course, every day we'd say, yeah, let's go follow the blue line. Kind of a half-assed joke. Uh, the Garmin. I love Garmin products, although I am not a, a whiz at them by any means. I barely know how to turn them on. I can always struggle with Garmin's just because I don't use them very much and uh, you know you gotta you gotta put some time and energy and hours into to that product in order to really be proficient at it so I took I didn't even turn it on the entire ride I had it there as a backup uh, next time I'm leaving at home I just used the iPhone I had you know like I said two apps in there that did an excellent job there was really no need for the Garmin the apps were much easier for for me to use uh, I made my own little mounting system. You can see here, I've got an aluminum spacer here. And then I drilled out the Garmin arm and put a long bolt in there. And uh, then my buddy, he's got a little bit different setup on his. I'll show you his. Uh, I've got the flex handlebars on my bike, which I absolutely love. He's got the Mako Mako 360 handlebar mount system, which I have on one of my other bikes. I love it as well. He had his Garmin here. Never turned it on either. And he had his phone mount over here. Uh, he used the uh, ball mount system. We sell that item. It's from XC Gear as well. And then he had his USB cable plugged into his phone as well. He used the Rever app also. Um, his tire setup was different than mine. He wanted tires a little less aggressive because he's, uh, you know, after this ride, he's going to spend more time uh, on easier stuff and, and pavement as well to get to places. And so we went with the Motaz. Oh, God, what is this tire called? The Mountain Hybrid. And looking for the size. It's a 120.18. And you can see that tire's got 780 miles on it. It's got a lot more left. Uh, that's probably a 2,000 mile tire. You know, they're not cheap, but they work well and last well. That worked very well on the pavement, worked very well on all the uh, dirt roads and Jeep roads we were on. On the front, he went with the Moto Z also. I call them Moto Zs. They're actually called Motaz, is the correct, correct pronunciation. This is the Mountain Hybrid as well. Uh, if you can see there, yep. You know, you, this tire's got a lot of life left on it, a lot of life. So, those tire setups worked very well. We both ran the same gearing. We ran 1448. Uh, if I had it to do over for the next trip, I'm going to put a 15 on the front, 1548. Just gives you a little more, uh, makes it a little bit better for cruising when they have to get on a road section. So both bikes uh, perform flawlessly. Uh, my suspension is fantastic. I've got the National on the back and uh, Lucky inserts and the forks. I can't say enough good about that suspension setup. Um, we didn't have any mechanicals, no crashes, nothing. It, it, that, that trip was flawless. We, uh, there was rain around us almost every day. Uh, and luckily, we just kind of slipped through the gap and uh, dodged the rain. We got a few slight sprinkles each day, but uh, we never really got rained on hard. So that was all great. All right, guys. Uh, guys are always asking me about my gear on this kind of ride also. 
Um, I'll start with my climb jacket. I've got a huge selection of climb jackets in my closet. It's almost embarrassing. I've got a, it's just crazy. I've got a bunch of climb jackets and I love them all. Been using them for many, many years, probably 25 or, or more years. And this is the Climb Raptor GTX, I believe is the name of it. And this is by far the favorite one uh, so far. You know, it's got this um, tough material on the elbows and the shoulders. I don't know what that material is called. It's on our site, slavensracing.com. It's got great ventilation on the front and the back and the arms. Uh, they call it a shell. I did have an underlayer on it. I forgot to lay that out here. Um, I think it's called the Inferno. I put underneath it on the cooler days. I use my climb helmet. This is the Creos Adventure. Absolutely fantastic helmet. Extremely comfortable and quiet. Uh, great features and functions. Only thing I didn't care for on it uh, was the transition transitions um, shield that I have on there. I would not do that. On the next trip, I would I definitely prefer just a clear, basic clear shield. Uh, the Dakar gear, so uh, by climb also. As you can tell, I'm a huge climb fan. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, there is climb is by far at the top of the pack on gear, and there's not even a close second. Uh, I mean, we've got a lot of other great gear that we sell. Don't get me wrong, but the climb gear is fantastic uh, they make something for everyone from, no matter what type of riding you're doing what type of a venture going on and i've got the climb pack here and i've already forgotten the name of this pack uh the arsenal and i don't know if this is the 15 or the 30 i'm sorry i'm ignorant on that but uh it worked very well also had plenty of storage Down here, I used an EVS kidney belt. This is an old fanny pack I've had for years by MSR. You know, I, those, this pack hasn't been available for 20 years, probably. I've had it forever. And we've got a lot of good packs on our website. I uh, used the fly, fly knee and shin guards. Um, CD Crossfire boots. I've been wearing CDs forever. Absolutely love them. Very tough boot with excellent protection, and it's also very comfortable. And up here is a fly jacket, the rain jacket that we sell. And you know, a lot of those clear plastic rain jackets are just junk, and this one is not. It's got some ventilation to it. It's got good zippers. It, it's extremely waterproof. I mean, it, it's plastic, so it's waterproof, you know. Uh, stops the wind or the rain. I wore it a few days mainly for, I just wanted another layer on for uh, cold weather because when we were crossing some of those passes it was pretty chilly and that jacket's i think 25 or 30 bucks uh, we sell the hell out of those very popular item packs well and uh of course i had some sunglasses and reading glasses and things like that uh you know typical personal items but this is the bulk of what i i had on my back and it was all comfortable you know when you're on these long rides like this cheap gear that doesn't fit well uh, can rub you uh, with hot spots and just you know grind grind into your skin and make you very uncomfortable and, and all this gear was very comfortable uh, I know a lot of guys are on tighter budgets but whatever I can tell you buy good quality comfortable gear if you're planning on a long trip because the cheaper stuff that doesn't fit well will just wear you out uh, just little things on on long rides can can worry you out so definitely uh, consider climb all this is available slavensracing.com we keep a good supply of it whenever we can sometimes climb stuff's a little hard to get but uh, we do our best to keep it on the shelf all right, guys, I think I'm going to wrap this up. 1,430 miles on that rear tire. I'm totally blown away by these M5B IRCs. Uh, the whole bike, the whole package, everything about, about it was great. We had a great ride. I highly recommend that you, if you're a dual sport guy, 
Now, let, let me define dual sport. In Colorado, dual sport is riding ranch roads, um, forest service roads, Jeep roads, that type of stuff. Uh, some of them are smooth, some of them are extremely rocky, some of them are a little bit rocky. Other parts of the country, dual sporting is different. It's it's riding easy trails or whatever. That's not what we do for dual sport in Colorado. This ride, uh, the backcountry discovery routes are designed for adventure bikes and dual sport bikes. So you can ride your big GS on there or your big KTM adventure model. I tell you, we this is supposed to be, uh, this route was intended to be done in six days. We did it in four uh, because we had the lighter bikes, smaller bikes that were just easier to handle through all that stuff. We saw guys on bigger bikes and, uh, you know, it's kind of a struggle on some of those tougher sections. It looks like you'd have more fun wrestling a grizzly bear. But uh, I highly recommend you check out these backcountry discovery routes. They... I don't know how many states they have them in, but, but it's uh, a lot, and they're adding states all the time. Uh, my next one's probably going to be the Wyoming. That's supposed to be a really good one. Uh, I've heard good reviews on it. I need to check up on it a little further, but I've already done the New Mexico one. That was good as well. Not Definitely not as good as Colorado. Uh, because that southwestern Colorado, the center and the southern part of our southwestern part of our state is just incredibly beautiful with the mountain passes. So, guys, get out and ride. Um, always be kind and courteous to other trail users and uh, route users, and uh, you know, just try to be a great trail ambassador for the sport. Help people when you can. Um, please like us on Facebook and Instagram and uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. Give us a shout out when you can. Uh, throw us a bone once in a while. You know, we need, need your business so we can stay afloat as well. And I think that's all for now, guys. Hope to see you out on the trail.